Morning guys, this is Simon with Trade and Perform Coaching. Important disclaimer and reminder for all traders and investors, the webinar is for educational purposes only, and not a recommendation to buy or sell any particular financial instrument. Equities, futures, options, and currency trading have large potential rewards, but also large potential risks. You must be aware of the risks and be willing to accept them in order to invest in the futures and options market. Absolutely do not trade with the money you can't afford to lose. This website is neither a solicitation nor an offer to buy or sell equities, futures, or options. No representation is being made that any account will or is likely to achieve profits or losses similar to those discussed on this channel. Past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Absolutely consult your registered financial advisor and your risk trading plan before ever investing or trading any financial instrument. Okay, so I actually feel fine my voice sounds like i'm on death's doorstep but the rest of me is doing pretty good um, that being said <clears throat> i'm going to have the great good 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 grace to not trade today and let my body recover um, and uh, so that being said i want to show the important areas and go over yesterday just a little bit okay so i switch between the volume profile and the uh, and the um, TPO and lately, you know, I kind of go with what I go with what's working better most recently, and the TPO is working very very well here recently. So I want to show you yesterday. Okay, so this is the this is the TPO. This is the 24 hour TPO. Okay. Yesterday we opened up. We have a naked volume point of control right in here. We couldn't quite get to it. So we found responsive buyers just in front of this 24, uh, 24, 26, 24, 26 and a quarter. Okay. We then pushed all the way up, re auctioned, and you'll see the high volume, high volume node for the 24 hour TPO, right? We pushed right into that. That was 24, 35 and three quarters. Ralph, by the way, if you're in the room, tip of the hat to you. Very nice. We called that yesterday for the high of the day. That was his upside target. Okay. The market then rolled down. If you'll look overnight, we spent the majority of the night in the same high volume node area. So this is where we're from a structural standpoint. So we don't know what route the market would choose to follow, right? But we have two areas here. We have this naked volume point of control, 24, between 24.51 and 26. Okay. In order to move down from a 24 hour perspective, there are several areas that are critical. This right here, so I would mark this down, this 24.18, 24.17 level, that is the retest. This is the retest of the breakout when we originally pushed to the upside. It's an important area. I would be looking for responsive buyers in this area if if we could stretch down this far, which is quite a challenge given the ranges that we've been having, right? From the, the first, so the first area I'm looking for to find responsive buyers would be in this location. And based on where we're trading right now, 24.32, that would be about a seven point rotation, which in the current context of the market would be a decent enough stretch to anticipate responsive buyers unless we end up with an open drive higher or an open drive, well, open drive lower specifically would be the only thing to change that. So these HVN areas and these high, high value areas have the greatest failure within the first 30 minutes and the highest success after the first 30 minutes. So you simply have to decide as a trader, right, whether you're willing to forego the opportunity of getting the response of buyers by skipping the first half hour, or if you have the capital and the mental stamina to sustain a stop early in the day, because you won't have any additional evidence, you won't have time to get tick divergence um, to take that trade in the first half hour simply based on location alone, right? After we get below this 24, 50, 20, 
24, 25, 6, 24, 24 area, right? You can see from a 24 hour perspective, this whole area down to 24, 17 is really poorly auctioned, right? When we switch that over to a day time frame, what you'll see is this is so what I don't want to see is see how we end up with well developed HVNs. But this whole day is poorly developed, and that's because this day spent time searching for value. Okay. What the market likes to do, what you'll see here is so we had something similar, not quite, because we developed a healthier HVN over here. But you can see between this point and this point, right? The market left. A very poorly auctioned area here and the way the market chose to handle that so this was the half cap it's really tiny so that was the half gap and on a day time frame we shot a little bit past that into where the first into where the open gap so there was a half gap here and there was an open gap right here okay so we shot a little bit past the half gap, but we couldn't quite reach the open gap. And then see this whole block, how it's just was poorly auctioned. The market spent time filling it in. Okay. Well, we have something similar between here and here. And my guess is that the market will want to come back. Okay. So we have an area here and then we have another area. Let's remove so we don't get confused. So we have an area here. And then we have another area here. Okay. So you see this 2412 on a 24 hour is actually quite well auctioned. This is a return to the scene of the crime. This is that same breakout point, that 2417. And so what the market tends to like to do is it likes to come in and fill back up the area with volume, right? So it's quite possible if we get below that 2424, right? Given that we closed at 2430, this would be about 10 to 15 down. And then they'll sit here and fill back in the volume and then push back up. Just like it did here, we left a really poorly auctioned area down here. We auctioned, we auctioned, we auctioned, we auctioned, we auctioned, we auctioned. You can see value shifted lower a little bit each day. We finally came down. Value, volume shifted down here. We filled in this area, right, the, which was the worst area that was auctioned, right, which would represent immediately this area right here, right? And then if we shift down, my guess is that the HVN will shift into this area, assuming we can get down here. We'll balance in this area, and then it'll depend. If we get above, this will become support for so we'll push back up to the high. If we get below it, then it'll come back in and do that same process right through here. So how do we translate that into what we're looking for? Well, two things. First of all, in order to be bullish, there's two hurdles. That are sitting right above us okay this is hurdle number one specifically this area right here 24 30 to 32 has to get above I would expect a pause and or rejection but even if we get above that 24 30 32 in this market and in this environment we're going to then slam into this area right here 2436 to 2437.50. We're going to have to get above. So you can see yesterday we pushed into that area. It depends on whether you prefer to use a day time frame chart or a 24 hour. We pushed into value area low, right? Which was actually an HVN on the 24 hour. Wasn't quite the HVN on the RTH, right? And then we rejected down. We had a long liquidation. We closed right at the bottom of this area. Which is why this became overnight, this became the white zone. 
I didn't get Globex high and low and hold on. Yes. 2433 and a quarter was Globex high, so I'm just gonna adjust this. Okay. And you can see we rejected out of this area all night long, right? So if we get underneath that 243050, what I would normally would do, what my expectation would be was that I would normally short right into this area, expecting to put if we were at the very top of the market, I would short this area, expecting to push down to test this naked volume point of control, where I would expect response of buyers. All right after that initial response, as long as we hold this area, okay, as long as we hold this area, I would expect a push back up. Okay, however, we consolidate with an inability to push out, and we get below 24, 23, 75. You then should push down to 24, 21, 24, 19. I consider that a weak location. And then instead would aim for a retest of this 24, 17 and three quarters. What I'm looking for here is tick divergence, right? Or tick extreme with an inability to break consolidation for a push back to the upside. That's what I would be looking for in this area. I expect rejection out of here and push down into 24, 24 and three quarters. And at least a retest of yesterday's um, yesterday's low out of this area. The flip side is, is if we the short has been difficult, right? If we push above here and hold, I would test expect to test in the 24.3650 and rege initial rejection out of this area. If we consolidate above this location, I would not be anticipating that that high would hold. Okay, I want to say that again. I would not anticipate that this high would hold. So then the question becomes, how do we translate this into our trade plan? Take it as opening modestly. You can see we're getting that rejection out of that 24.33 area. Like I said, if I, even if I felt better, I might consider shorting that. But obviously, I, I, I'm just not 100%. There's no reason for me to go to bat on that right now. I haven't been shorting for a while, so I can wait another day before I decide to become a short king, right? I consider this area weak. It's been tested two times, okay? Usually the third or fourth test will break. Okay, I expect a response here. So what are we going to do? Well, if we, we can look to yesterday for a model. So first question is, can we get above the first five minute hunt? Go through a checklist. Can we get through our first five minute high? Can we hold above Globex high, right? The real key here is if we consolidate above 24.36 and hold, I would expect to push up late in the day, right? If the first five minute bar is down, right? Rotation into this area. If it's in the first 30 minutes, I already mentioned what you have to do. After the first 30 minutes, we know we saw from yesterday on the 50-60 back, tick divergence provided a beautiful rotation back to the upside, right? And then you'll also notice into that push into the high that on that bar that pushed the high push that we actually ended up with a negative tick on that five minute bar. It's not a very good sign when that occurs. And then subsequently we couldn't break the high and then we trapped back underneath the low. I got to say something important. I want everyone to hear it so they know. When we break IB high late in the afternoon, and then we come back for the 50-60 test, that test is highly likely to fail. And I personally would not want to be long that area. I spoke to several people yesterday. I had two people in the room who were short from that 24-35 and did very well on the short side. I spoke to two people who took longs yesterday afternoon trying to catch the counter rotation. Last hour, both the people who took longs were up on the day nicely and could have walked out with a profit, right? And when your focus is on how much PL you have versus how up to that point both of them had executed their trades and their trade plan perfectly, right? When you look at your trade at your when you when you're looking at your PL instead of your trade plan, you're setting yourself up for challenges that make life very difficult as a trader, okay? 
if you go back and mark down all the days, again, if I'm up on the day, I don't want to walk out with less than it gets to 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I don't want to walk out with less than one half of what I have. If you don't have enough capital in that P&L to take another trade without giving up that profit, to me that means don't take the trade. Because there's a psychology behind winning. When you get used to taking the right trade, <clears throat> and you get used to stacking up P&L on your account, It becomes a common thing, and your mind is no longer asking whether you can make it in this business or whether you will find the opportunities to get paid or how will you get paid because what will happen is your slow days will usually end up being flat to slightly down and your up days will be, and most days will be consistently profitable because you're going to be hunting in sniper mode for those one or two trades. And they set up almost every day. There's almost not a day that we come in, regardless of rotation size, where we don't get. So we didn't get the early trade. We got the 50-60 back. We got the completion up to 35, almost a 10-point rotation, negative tick into the HVN, and rejection out of the HVN for a push back down, right? There's almost not an occasion where that doesn't work, okay? And um, I would encourage y'all to go back and keep a journal of all the trades you take that are not on your menu selection. This makes trading really boring because you're just sitting there waiting for one or two shots. It also makes it really, really profitable. And you'll be amazed how much capital you can amass by just taking one or two trades a day that fit your setup perfectly. So for every person that's different, some people can't take a trade when it sets up because they're, they're concerned. They see other things that make them think, oh, the trade's not going to work, right? For others, they see everything and they think it's going to work. But the answer to the solution to both people is the same. Write down your process and follow your process. That's all you have to do. There's nothing else to it. Decide, do you trade the first half hour or do you give up the first half hour? Right? It really doesn't matter which one you select at all. It truly, truly doesn't. Um, are you going to short or are you not going to short? Right? Shorting is a challenge because a lot of people have a hard time flipping from one side of the market to the other. I personally think it's much easier to trade to the long side than wait for the market to come down to your location and push it back up. But just like everyone, we're all born with different sets of capabilities and skills. Right? So, I would, uh, we one tick, by the way, over Globex High there, uh, just FYI. And tick is neutral, 115, not positive or negative. Um, so, my, that is my, that is my two cents about that setup. Okay, so again, I want to be clear where I'm looking for areas. I'm looking for responses out of this, out of this zone right here. I need help in this area. I want tick divergence. I expect a response from the scene of the crime first time in. And somewhere between this 24, 17, 3 quarters and this 24, 15 to 24, 12 and 3 quarters, which on the 24 hour, okay, there's a ton of volume sitting here. And I'll expect that to get re respected first time we move into this area. So, scene of the crime, 2413, 2412 area. This is all a stretch down here. And the number one trade we're looking for is five minute take divergence for that U turn back in the other direction. Okay, so that's my two cents about that. I don't have really anything else to add. Uh, the other thing I want to. Um, the other thing I want to add as a as a trader, I'm trying to lead by example. I'm not 100% today. I could trade, but when you don't feel good, there's no point sitting there and pounding your body into submission. Okay, you just there's no reason for it. 
just let let the let the market let the market work for you on your behalf when you feel good okay stressful business when you don't allow things to work in a natural cycle so that you can make pit p l on the table the other thing i want to point out is even though we have these hvns sitting above us right these two locations this one we have to get above or that we're working on right now we're at value area high right now from yesterday we're trying to peak above that and then this 2436 look at the big picture it's not bearish and if you look through here just as a reminder because people forget right in this whole time frame went all the way back to last month and more right we've gotten consistent u-turns back up I'd want to be eagle-eyed. There was really only one day where we closed the absolute low of the day. Everything else was a U-turn, right? So catching the short yesterday was nice for people to be able to do. But it's a really tough way to make a living on a consistent basis in ES. So, um, Bill, I saw that you just came in the room. Do, does the 24, 24, and 3 quarters, you agree with the naked volume point of control there? Could you back check my work for me, please? Econ wise. We have Crude oil inventories at 9:30 a.m. and that's it. There's no other. There's no other econ out. Okay, so I don't know what drove NQ yesterday afternoon, but it wasn't pretty. Late in the day, it wasn't leading, and it caused the whole market to roll down. Again, I, the other thing I have marked off is the opening print, right? Which is approximately right here. Oh, I don't cannot see my data window. Twenty four thirty one seventy five is the opening print. And so at any rate, that's my that is my two and three cents about um, about the day. I don't have anything else to add. Beyond that, that would be of significant value, I don't think. Anyone have any questions? Bill, do, was there any other corrections to the naked volume point of control? I made the correction up here at 2436.50. I don't think there was anything else that I needed to catch on that. And of course, NQ again is pushing up this morning. NQ on the side here.
You can see we've capped. I don't have any idea what caused that run down in NQ yesterday. But that was not at all pretty. Um, <laughs> in any way, shape, or form. That was not at all pretty. So I don't know what was going on, but wow. That's all I can say. That was that was a very difficult deal for sure. So again, we're right at the top of that value area high from yesterday. And we'll see if there's uh, any response from the market to push to the downside. It really will depend on whether NQ can re-auction that whole area or not. But um, it's not weak or strong, so it's likely to be balanced today with a lack of news. So again, this is my, if I have a key area, that's my key area. And obviously it has to get below the opening print in order to make any impression to the downside. We were unable to get above Globex high as well, so. Again, when the tick is neutral like this, I like to usually wait till we get a plus or minus 600 on one side of the coin or the other before making any kind of commitment. And remember, you're looking for tech to help you assess when they've made a mistake and they've gotten themselves trapped, right? You're not trying to. There's no need to guess. The tick will reveal almost every time whether they're giving you an edge or not giving you an edge, right? And then look at the pace. Really slow, right? So you don't have to overcommit on that. They'll open it up at some point during the day. It's pretty typical summertime, so wait till they make the mistake and then catch them. Does anyone have any questions before I shut it down? I'm not going to shut the room down, but I'm going to shut my, stop talking. I know that's hard to believe, but that's exactly what I'm going to do. Oh, I moved, Brian, I moved this down to 2436.50 is where the naked volume point of control is. And I moved the white zone back one tick to account for Globex high. But other than that, I didn't do anything. I don't think he wants to. Okay, guys, I'm going to mute out. Um, I'll monitor from afar, but I will talk to you all uh, most likely tomorrow. Anyways, I'll talk to you all later, guys. Thanks.